I'm talking about the mind. Amen. I'm talking about the mind. The Bible states in Proverbs chapter 23 and the verse is 7. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. I think it's appropriate as, as the brethren uh, share with me, I'll be speaking at, at a banquet. Uh, I want us to understand as we think about the heart, as we think about the understanding that we ought to get. If we have a steady diet of junk food, we will have to suffer the physical consequences. If we have a steady diet of spiritual food, we'll reap the benefits. And I want to just challenge us and encourage you tonight as it relates to understanding that. Understanding as we talk to the teens today, the young people, we talk to their parents and other adults. We as God's people in the Church of Christ, we must recognize who we are, whose we are, and how we operate. If we begin to look like, sound like, and act like the world, are we truly the distinctive church that God would have us to be? I look at preachers oftentimes, and I think about, we don't need to act like some denominational preacher, put on a show, just preach the word. A steady diet of tradition, tradi tradition a steady diet of uh, not only uh, just trying to please men, that's junk food. We need a steady diet of real spiritual food. Yeah. When we think about understanding, and Paul Wright wrote to the Church of Christ in Ephesus in Ephesians chapter 1, in the verses 18, the eyes of your understanding. You see where I'm pointing right now? I'm trying to help you with that roast beef and gravy. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you will know, that you may know, that you may know. What is the hope of his calling? What the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? Let me just pause for a minute. As I think about, as I told the teens, as I told the adults, for 27 years in Miami, I work with gang leaders. Had the opportunity to work with whether it's Zopound, Bloods, Crips, Latin Kings, whatever the case may be. And that prepared me for dealing with the church. Some of y'all just got it. These young men would literally hate one another just based on the color of a t-shirt, color of a bandana. Hate, not even knowing anybody. Think about that for a minute. Because you live on that block, that neighborhood, I hate you automatically. But then I look at members of the Lord's Church sometimes. <laughs> and we need to be mindful and understand the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that we may know what is hope of this calling and his inheritance of this, in his saints. Envy, jealousy. What do we need to do to remain faithful? Keep our eyes on God. Yes. Remove the envy, remove the jealousy and, and love. Understand our roles and responsibilities. Many of the lessons that were preached this day understand that the Lord's church, the church of Christ, is the only place you can be saved. As I preached last night, I'm not going to re-preach it, but I must say, when Jesus said, whom do you say that I am? When Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. That was not a question. That was a definitive statement based on his faith. Amen. And so we recognize who we are and who God is and what he expects of us. As I tell my kids, there's a financial phrase, actual and expected. When I study corporate finance at the University of Toledo, I recognize very clearly you can actual and expected. And so what, what people expect from us as God's people, the church of Christ, is book, chapter, and verse. Amen. Loving one another. Sisters understanding their role. Amen. Amen. Brothers understanding the necessity of leadership. And when we do that, saints, we can remain faithful. Amen. But see, when you have that ex expectation of what you actually get, had a sister tell me tonight. I'll keep it anonymous. Keep it general. That she visited the beautiful city of, of Miami. Call the congregation, they said call somewhere else. Y'all y'all catch that? Yeah, we want to worship with you, we're in town, travel, call somewhere else. See what you expect and what you actually get sometimes are two different things. What our kids expect from each of us as adults is to be real. What they ought to expect from us is just that. And hopefully, prayerfully, and hopefully as we think about the word of God tonight. I want, to go to, I want to go to scripture and let you know exactly what we're dealing with as God's people. And so as we think about what you, what you eat and your junk food and your steady diet, 
Imagine a steady diet of prayer, a steady diet of forgiving folks, a steady diet of fellowship, a steady diet of studying God's word, a steady diet. Y'all get it yet? Imagine a steady diet of that and what that will do for our spiritual growth. What our kids, when they grow up with a legacy, because see, keep in mind, my grandmamas, all of her brothers were gospel preachers in Illinois. <laughs> I had to point at Kevin on that one. <laughs> and so if grandmama could see me now, my mother's mom, Go Van Curl was one of my mentors, Brother Doris Pitts, one of my mentors. And what, they, what those men showed me, what those men taught me, and I was just a little boy when John Lawrence was preaching at the Glass City Church of Christ. I was just younger then. But to be able to have Go Van Curl call me son as I sat on that front pew and read scriptures for him, that did something to me to have a man that looked like me call me son. My parents divorced when I was two. Read that scripture, son. I read it like I could, like I could re read no more because it encouraged me. So what I'm saying to you, brothers and sisters, is as we think about the word of God tonight, as we think about growing up in the Lord and really recognizing, and in my lesson tonight is the anatomy of a Christian soldier. How do we remain faithful? We need to understand who we are as Christian soldiers. There is the answer. As we think about the word of God tonight, the human mind is like a, is a receptacle. That which goes in, you've heard the statement, garbage in, garbage out. The human mind is the receptacle, and when you think about the human mind, what we take in, what we digest, should complement the purpose of our existence. Let me break that down a little further. If we take in junk, it should not compute with what we read. I remember vividly, baby boy, he's 12 years old now. We're watching NFL Draft years ago, and that day when there was a, a guy that was kind of celebrated for his sexuality. Celebrate. He was drafted by the Los Angeles Rams. Some of you know who I'm talking about. And when he and when he was drafted, he kissed his boyfriend. And my son was sitting right next to me. He's like, Daddy, oh, great response. <laughs> it didn't compute. Y'all got it now? See, the human mind is a receptacle. That which we take in should complement the purpose of our existence. So if we don't know the word, we won't be able to tell real from counterfeit. Yeah. As they train bankers and they start touch, they feel the money. They're like, no, this is not right. So when we hear something, see something, and because we have a steady diet of God's word, we recognize that what I am seeing does not jive, align, co go with the word of God. And so that young man knew that as a, as a young, as a child, may we keep teaching God's word. Amen. May we never, may we put our kids on a steady diet of good, wholesome food. So that as when it goes in, the heart, it can help us grow and mature and just do what we need to do. Look at what uh, the Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, the verses 8. Listen to what Paul talked about, right, to the church of Christ at Philippi. You know, this God-designed food for thought that can nourish the soul and build strong character. Paul says in Philippians 4 and 8, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Yes. What's on your mind tonight? What's on our heart Tonight, if we truly want to grow, mature, develop, and be what God would have us to be. See, maturity is not just based on chronological age. Maturity is based on what you do. Because I've seen some, <clears throat> I won't say older, seasoned folks who should be doing more. Remember the Hebrew writer said, when the time you ought to be teachers, you have neither one teacher again, which would be the first principle of the oracles of the word of God. So as we think about the word of God tonight, just because you have age doesn't mean you, so we, we need to act, live, encourage consistently. Amen. Let me just pause for a minute. Wisdom versus knowledge. Knowledge, as you may know, wisdom means I apply. Wisdom means I use it to, for the good. I tell my kids all the time, I got all kinds of phrases for them. I said, use your superhero powers for good. Now, we're from Miami, not Wakanda, but the bottom line, I tell my kids all the time, use your powers for good. Help people understand that you have a brand 
They, know, they understand what I mean by the Nelson brand, but ultimately, ultimately, like Paul said, I can do all things through Christ. And so what Paul says in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all knowledge, no, in all wisdom. So when that word dwells in us, so if we have a steady diet of good spiritual food, let it dwell in you and richly in all wisdom. Use what you know. May we all use what we know and help somebody else. I've seen professors that had great knowledge but couldn't impart it in such a way that people can understand it. Brothers, let me just say this to you. I know a little Hebrew, I know a little Greek, but may we recognize we're dealing with human beings as well. We can break down the word all we want, but if those kids don't understand it, how can they apply it? I can conjugate a verb with the best of them. But we need to make sure we're human beings as well and not robots. Why am I saying that? Because there's young people sitting in this room today that met with me this morning. They said we have too many robots in the church. I met with the parents. Hello, brother. Hello, sister. Hello, brother. Hello, sister. It's like we just we go through the same routine. I'm not here to beat you up tonight. I came a long way to, to get to know you, to love you. But I got it. You, am I your enemy because I tell you the truth? Y'all wake up and don't let that girl speak. Leave you. Stay with me now. <laughs> We need to be real. Human relationships, recognizing that behavior is a function of the person and the situation. So when kids see us, when other Christians see us, may they see reality. May they see someone that says, brother, sister, I made mistakes when I was a kid. I made mistakes as a young adult. I made mistakes as an adult. Amen. Walls and lights. <laughs> but we are all just like this. Like we fell out of heaven. Kids read right through it. And the Academy Award for Best Actress goes to the Blank Street Church of Christ. Insert whatever you want there. I see it all across the brotherhood. We better stop acting. If we are to remain faithful to the Lord, may we be real. Real about who, who we love, our Lord Jesus Christ. Real about the mistakes that we've made. That's just part of life. The scriptures still say, Romans 3 and verse 23, that all have sinned. Break that down the original language and come short of the glory of God. We missed the mark. So if, if we can read that, we preach that till we're blue in the face. May we understand that that's at the end of the day, that's how we grow. So when we think about our thoughts, garbage in, garbage out, the receptacle for what we take in to complement the purpose of our existence. God designed us for his good pleasure Amen. to serve his will. And in the very beginning, the Bereshit in the Hebrew, the book of beginnings in Genesis chapter 6 and verse number 5. What did God see in the very beginning? I'm so glad you asked. The Bible says God saw that the wickedness of man was great in all the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart were good. No, sir. No, ma'am. It was only evil. And it wasn't a one-time event. It wasn't episodic. It wasn't intermittent. The thoughts of his heart were only evil continually. So if that's what we're dealing with. If God saw that as we think in our heart, as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So, so what's our answer? Well, Jesus made it plain in Matthew chapter 15, where he says, for out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, Murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. So now why is it so important as we think about the lesson over my shoulder? How do we remain faithful? We need to understand it begins with our heart. If we break down the anatomy of a Christian soldier, a soldier, we can be good soldiers or we can be bad soldiers. Now, why is it so important that we understand the anatomy of a soldier? Because, brothers and sisters, here's the breaking news. We are at war. Second Timothy. Second Timothy, chapter 2, beginning in verse 3. Listen to what Paul said to his son in the faith, Timothy. Thou therefore endure hardness. Endure. Thou therefore, in other words, you must endure Break down that word, endure. Go through something. 
Take it down another notch. You got to persevere. Take it down another notch. You need to be resilient. What does resilient mean? In spite of the obstacle, in spite of the challenge, in spite of people talking about you, even church members of the Lord's church not supporting you, you still have to endure. Because not everybody will want sound doctrine, sound teaching. When we got members of the Lord's church talking about, talking about, I says I said last night, I don't know if it's if it's only one. Well, how many do you read about in the Bible? It shall stand forever. Christ is the head. No brother, no couple. We get cute with that too. I don't know if you guys use first ladies here, but I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Wait a minute now. Just God's the head. Stop all that. I was going to let that simmer for a minute. <laughs> we start getting into titles. We lose our mind. Isn't brother enough? Isn't sister enough? Is it? Don't you don't have to answer out loud, but I want you to let that simmer. And we have to begin to, we got to make sure we differentiate, differentiate who's truly in charge. Last time I read my Bible, elders have the oversight. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Simple and plain. I got mighty quiet here. <laughs> Shall I continue? Amen. I'm going to ask you for admission. I'm going to continue anyway. <laughs> Even if you play noise behind me, Richard. <laughs> Thank you. Now, therefore, endure hardness. Be resilient. Persevere. Go through it. You have to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Amen. No man that war entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. We are at war. Mm -hmm. Warfare requires strategy. Strategy requires equipment. Equipment requires leadership. And leadership requires faithfulness. So if we all understand our God-given role, listen to that again, our God-given roles. If we understand the nature, the distinctive nature of the church of Christ, what God set up, he's the head. There should be no power struggles amongst brethren. Amen. Amen. God is in charge. The father sent his son who died, purchased the church with his own blood, no earthly headquarters for a spiritual kingdom, John 18 and verse 36. So if we know Christ is in charge, we need to fall in line, do his will, do our work, and everything God has designed, he has given it specifications. What do you mean by that, preacher? What I'm saying is, and let me apply this for a minute, Brother Richard, because the bottom line is, when I was with the four kids, I put together a few toys in my day. And sometimes I would not take the time to read the instructions. Some of you daddies know what I'm talking about. Instructions over there. Toy pieces in front of me. I got it. I got it. So you hit the button that's supposed to go right, it goes left. Hit this other button that's supposed to, you know, you go backwards, now it falls over. When all else fails. Read the instructions. When all those fails, read the instructions. For marriage, for family, for rearing our children, for teaching, for forgiving. When all else, when we say, I got it. I know what the Bible says, but this, I, this, this, this gets me to this day. I know what the Bible says, Brother Nelson. I know what the Bible says, Brother Barry, but you don't know what I'm going through. My brother was in the United States Marine Corps. The United States Marine Corps has a, a phrase they use, it's a Latin phrase, they shortened it, Semper Fi. Latin, Semper Fidelis is the full phrase. Translate that into Latin, it means always faithful. What, isn't that in something? What if that were the case for every member of the Lord's church? Always faithful. Behavior is a function of the person in the situation. Now, what will it take for you? What, will, what scenario, what situation will it take for you or me not to be faithful? I pray to God that we can always have that mindset of always faithful. Amen. And when I think about whenever I go somewhere and I tell people that my brother was in the USMC, usually, usually I get a response, hoorah. Anywhere I go in Florida, all across this nation, they, there's, a, there's a brotherhood. And brothers, here's the thing. I have gone places and 
Said hello to brothers in Christ. And the response was a hoorah. <laughs> it was who do you think you are? I spoke at a lectureship. I won't mention the state. And I talked about uh, is compromise necessary to compete with the secular world was my topic. When I stood up there and I had a room full of preachers. And there was, a, there was one elder in that room. And I preached on uh, how preachers should not take the oversight over elders. Some preachers got up and walked out. If we're going to remain faithful, we got this a lot. And guess where I came from? Scripture. I preach elders should have the oversight of a local congregation. If you don't have elders, you should be seeking, you should be grooming and training folks until they qualify. Amen. But that may not go over well with some of the tables in here. I don't know. I don't know many of you in here. But the bottom line is this. The Bible teaches it. As I tell many of my basketball teams in Miami, I say, okay, when you think about the, uh, the playbook, we have certain playbook. I got certain plays, and my kids know my plays, and my son is coaching. He's running my plays. I should charge him. <laughs> this team just won the championship in Miami a couple weeks back. But when you run the play and you score, should you be surprised? When we do what God says, how God said do it, should we be surprised? There's no need to celebrate. We should just go ahead and just do his will and thank the Lord God Almighty. Yeah. Paul had, had this to say in Ephesians chapter 6. When we think about warfare, Paul put it in perspective. Paul put this thing in perspective in Ephesians chapter 6. Because when we think about warfare, Paul made it very clear that we need to recognize who the war is not against. When you think about that for a minute, Paul says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Translate that in God's strength. It is not our strength, our ability, our intellect. Be strong in the Lord and the power, the strength of his might. That same Paul's one who said, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthened me. But Paul goes on to say. And as we think about strength and as we think about what Paul had to say, he said, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles, the schemes, the devices of the devil. But here's the, here's the deal, saints. If we're to remain faithful, use your energy wisely. For we wrestle not, that word wrestle, contend. For we don't contend, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. It's not a physical fight. It's not you versus me. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Mm -hmm. The strength is found in the Lord. The strength that we have to contend, not with one another, but with Satan, his devices, false teaching, false doctrine, elevating women over men, men with men and women with women. We have to contend against that foolishness and not one another. Mm -hmm. The Bible goes on to say that. And Jesus put it best, as we said last night. My kingdom, the king's domicile, the king's house, is not of this world. If it were so, then would my servants fight. If you recall from last evening, I made the statement, I'll say it again for emphasis sake. A physical kingdom requires a physical defense. A spiritual kingdom requires a spiritual defense. May we be equipped and ready for war. Not to go and hurt anybody's feelings, because the intent is to save their soul. And if their feelings are hurt as you teach the gospel of Jesus Christ, then so be it. He says, I'm the, Jesus says, I'm the rock of offense. I was at variance, family members with family members, paraphrasing for time's sake. Just teach the truth in love. Amen, Amen saints. How's that roast beef doing? <laughs> well, all right. Some of y'all lady, I'll just sit back now. I'm almost where I need to be. Brother already prayed. I hope he sit down. I hope he said quit. I hope he quit soon. That was one of the worst introductions I've ever had in my life. But I love Brother Bill. I sure hope he quits. He had just eaten. I love you, Bill. Our enemy. Satan. First Peter 5 and 8. Be sober, be vigilant. Because the adversary is a roaring lion, seeketh whom he may devour. devour. Think about that, 1 Peter 5 and 8, for a minute, 8 and 9. As you think about what Peter is saying, and I want to just give you some of this for you to take with you tonight. As you think about warfare, as you think about verse 8, be sober, be in control. Opposite of sobriety is drunkenness. 
Well, you are, you are not in control of your own faculties. You may fall over. Anything is just, you're, you're vulnerable. So be sober. Be in control. Be vigilant. Translate that. Be aware. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. How do we remain faithful to the Lord? Saints of God, please understand this. How does a lion hunt? Why did Peter use the, 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 the kind of the metaphoric language of as a roaring lion? As a roaring lion. A lion waits in the cut and watches and sees the weakness at table two. <laughs> or maybe table ten. Oh, my 12-year-old sleep on me. Don't look at him right now. I just saw him. <laughs> the third plate I knew would get him. <laughs> but the devil is a roaring lion. is looking about. That sister that's sitting there envious, jealous, insecure, talking about who's not fellowshipping. As a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. The one that's running the gazelle, that's running real fast up front, in a pack, with support. The lion's going to get them. But you lagging behind. Murmuring, complaining. I don't know if this happens in Ohio. I'm using Florida examples just for the benefit and to protect the innocent. But the devil is like a roaring lion. Don't be in that pack. Apart from the pack, I should say. And so when the Bible goes on to say, you know, that a Christian's charge as a soldier, we recognize that our enemy is the devil, Man. not one another. Man. And so as we, as we move on, I want you to understand that the devil has significant strategies. The devil schemes his devices to defeat us. He's a master of deception, evil maneuvers. As I think about military strategies, I think about you know, the ways you can ambush. In 1 Peter 5 and 8, as a roaring lion, he, the lion ambushes. But not only, does that, well, not only that, the devil recruits. You all realize the devil recruits. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 through 15, he recruits. He's got ministers and servants that work with him and for him. Not only that, the devil seeks to take advantage of us. As we think about uh, the devil seeking to gain an advantage, Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, beginning at verse number 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, beginning at verse number 10. As we think about what the devil does, listen to this now. See, Paul says, the way I live my life, the way I act, I forgive. That steady diet, we talk about junk food versus good spiritual food. See, if we do what's right by God. And sometimes I've had people say, in, in, many a, in many a Bible class, even in casual conversation, I'm not ready to forgive. Again, these are Florida examples, mind you. I'm not ready to forgive. What if you die tonight? Paul says in 2 Corinthians 10, but that is the backdrop and pretext. To whom you forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything to whom I forgave it, for your sakes forgave I it in the person of Christ. Be prepared to forgive and be prepared to go the extra mile for somebody else. Verse 11, he says, lest Satan, that roaring lion. If you're, if you're that one saying, I'm not ready to forgive, there goes the pack. There goes the ones who are growing and you're back here saying, I'm not ready to forgive. Satan as a roaring lion, ready to ambush. Verse 11 again, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant unaware of his devices. Mm -hmm. Power is influence. Influence impacts relationships. Relationships impact behavior. We need to have real relationships with one another so we can talk and just have fun and just be ourselves. Take off the mask. Get rid of the facade. Get rid of the phoniness. And let's just be real with one another. Amen. There's too many children of God that are, there's people that don't know you in the church, maybe even in your own congregations. And there are some, watch this, this one may hurt, who don't want to, you to get to know them. They can do everything in their power to evade. The devil is it's real, folks. And tonight I want to encourage us all to grow. Change our diet. Do what's right. Because behavior impacts relationships. Relationships drive are driven by the heart, how we act. And I'm going to close with this. When we came here, flew in a day early, went up to Toledo, my hometown, where I grew up. Went by Pickett Elementary School. And my kids, I mean, I'm jumping out of there. Went by Landers Park, where I grew up and played football after worship service. 
And as I showed my kids all these places, I was all, all excited. I think some of the sisters heard about all that. That's why you're smiling right now. I don't know what version my wife told. <laughs> Y'all need to stop laughing. Now they just woke up. I don't know what you said, but my help me. <laughs> but as I think about growing up in Toledo, Ohio, there's, and I took a picture of a building on the corner of Hawley and Hamilton. We lived at 1028 and a half Hamilton, the upstairs apartment. And that building we went to, Brother Richard, Brother Kevin, it's called the Lynx Neighborhood Center. It's shut down now, because I think they're about to tear it down, unfortunately. As I think about that place, as I think about the neighborhood, but as a kid, my grandma would always say, you be careful with some of these people. You just tell them by the way he walks, and he ain't up to no good. Because you have to understand, I told my kids, see, brothers back then had rollers in their hair. <laughs> Some of y'all might have had some rollers in your head. <laughs> Just thought about that. <laughs> Toothpick, rollers in their hair. And it would have certain walks. I'm not going to demonstrate, but they had certain walks. And some of us walked with a lean. It wasn't because there was any medically, nothing medically wrong with them or their posture. I got to close my eyes. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So brother walked walk with a lean. Drive with a lean. Yeah, yeah reminisce up at back table, reminiscing right now. <laughs> Well, this tap his bike later. That was me, baby. <laughs> and so we, we learned very quickly as kids that there was this cool walk. <laughs> but say, so here's the question for you tonight. How are you walking? Translate that word walk. That walk and word of vocation, what we were called. See, I'm, talk, I'm not talking about a cool walk in inner city Toledo now. I'm talking about our lifestyle. Yeah. What people can see. Yeah. What we emit. And as we think about walking, 1 John chapter 1 and verse number 7 says, If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship, koinonia. We have that, we share the most beautiful thing, Jesus Christ. We share in fellowship one with another. The Bible says, If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Stay together, stay in the pack. The lion's in the cut. Hunting, looking, ready to ambush, but no matter what, come hell or hot water, I want my kids to see mom and daddy doing right. I want my kids to recognize if mom and daddy makes a mistake, we have a call, what's called a family meeting. We will sit down. They've heard me apologize. Yeah. And you know what, kids, you know, daddy was so harsh with mama. When, you know, I was just, I, I, was, I, was, I wasn't patient. They've heard me do that. They've seen me do that. I want my kids to respect me as a man. They can see a man. It's okay for a man to cry. Amen. Remove the facade. Mm -hmm. Remove the mask. And be real. Yes. You've heard the statement that people don't care how much you know, but they want to know how much you care. So let's walk worthy of the vocation. Let's walk circumspect. Let's be aware of what's going on around us. Don't be aloof spiritually. Be aware that vigilance Peter was talking about. Walk honestly. Walk by faith. And most important as we think about being a child of God, get in Christ before it's too late. Amen. There is a phrase that a poet once wrote, I sought myself, myself I could not see. I sought my brother and sister, they eluded me. I sought my God and I found all three. When we come to grips with who we are, with who Christ is and what he's done for us, we then can grow, we can do. We can understand, as Peter said, as Paul said, rather, the eyes of our understanding. So tonight, the encouragement for each and every one of you is God has given us this opportunity to wage warfare. May we be equipped, ready to stand up, speak up, and show up for what God has called us all to do, which is to walk worthy, live in such a way that Christ can be glorified. Amen. If there's someone here tonight that's not a member of the Lord's Church, you certainly can be. You certainly can be. Recognize that God has a plan, a scheme of redemption. And God, you can only be saved in the Church of Christ. You cannot be saved outside of the ark of safety, the body of Christ. 
So I'm going to come on up here. But the bottom line is this. As we think about what God has done for our sins, that scheme of redemption, if we hear and believe what Christ has done for our sins, he died, he was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Salvation is only in Christ, Acts 4 and verse number 12. Not only is salvation only in Christ, if you are to be uh, reap those spiritual benefits, spiritual blessings. I don't know if you, they say it in Ohio, but they say it in Florida. I'm too blessed to be stressed. I'm blessed and highly favored. Well, you know what a blessing is a benefit? And all spiritual blessings are in Jesus Christ. Amen. Ephesians 1 verses 3 and 7. So if you're outside of Christ, you don't reap those spiritual benefits, those spiritual blessings. So if you hear and believe what Christ has done, be willing to repent of your sins. Turn from your ways, turn to God. Confess Christ to be the son of the living God. Matthew 10 and verse 32. And be willing to make that confession that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. Amen. Matthew 10, verse 32. Upon that confession, we baptize you, we immerse you. There's a pool not far from here. We'll tell the kids to get out of it. <laughs> you be immersed in water. Your sins are washed away, Acts 22, 16. You're baptized into Christ. Galatians 3, 27. You rise up to walk, to live in a brand new way of life. Being faithful unto death. Not on junk food, but true spiritual food so we can grow and develop be what God would have us to be. May God bless you. May God keep you. If you need to respond in any way, please do so right now. So together stand and sing. Won't you come? Jesus.